If you're a CIO about to embark on a transformation, there's a lot of pitfalls that you can run into and transformation today looks a lot different than it did in the past. And I'm going to talk about everything you need to know to manage a transformation. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And for a lot of CIOs and IT directors, especially CIOs and IT directors that are new to their roles, they find that they're up against a big challenge in trying to lead their organizations through transformations. In some cases, they have no choice but to lead the organizations through change. In other cases, the change is being forced upon them. But whatever the case is, I want to talk today about all the things you need to know as a CIO going into a transformation. So for a lot of organizations, COVID-19 in the year 2020 in general has forced a certain amount of change and digital transformation upon organizations. But even prior to 2020, there was a lot happening in the industry that was creating a need for change. There's economic changes and economic growth, a lot of merger and acquisition types of activities. There is the whole transition to the cloud as a lot of ERP and HCM and CRM vendors migrate their solutions to the cloud. And in some cases, legacy products, some of the on-premise solutions that a lot of organizations had been using for decades are now obsolete and they have no choice but to move to the cloud. In other cases, organizations are proactively trying to figure out how can we establish an infrastructure that allows us to scale for growth. But whatever the case may be, whether the change is being thrust upon you or whether it's a proactive leadership role you're taking in leading that transformation, it's important to embrace the fact that the world is going through changes and your organization is going through changes. Despite the fact that most people watching this video are thinking about or about to go through a transformation, Every organization has different transformations and different parameters and different priorities as they go through their transformation. So regardless of where you are in your journey and what type of transformation you're going through and whether the transformation is being forced or whether you're proactively leading a transformation, every organization has different criteria that it needs to follow. It has different goals and objectives it's trying to accomplish as an organization. And therefore, the digital strategies that companies are going to deploy or should deploy are going to look differently. And even though there's a lot of one size fits all sales and marketing messaging out there in the industry that you might hear from enterprise software vendors and system integrators, there really is no one size fits all answer. So the key and one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give to a CIO or IT director is define what transformation means to your organization and make those decisions and trade-offs that are most appropriate for your organization, regardless of what competitors or other industry players might be doing or regardless of what enterprise software vendors might tell you, it's important to really dial in a strategy and approach that's specific to your organization and what you're trying to accomplish. And once you have that defined, then the other pieces tend to fall into place much better. Some of the most effective CIOs and IT directors that we've ever worked with at our clients are the ones that don't think too much about technology. In fact, some of the most effective ones don't know much about technology at all. They're good leaders, they understand the business and technology is more of a secondary skill set or knowledge base that they have. In some cases, some of the CIOs we work with have very little knowledge of technology in the marketplace. But regardless of what you do or don't know about technology, it's important in some ways just to set aside technology and focus on your business first. Really understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, how the business can be improved, what the opportunities for improvement are, and really define what that's all gonna look like first and use that as a blueprint to define what types of technology might you be able to fit into the organization. Now, it's not just that we wanna forget about technology and not think about technology, but we wanna be focused on the things that are gonna be most likely to make our transformation succeed or fail. And the things that are most likely to make our transformation succeed or fail are gonna be the things related to business process improvement, organizational change management, things related to the people and process side of the people, process, and technology trifecta. Remember that one part of the video where I said to forget about technology? Well, I was being somewhat facetious when I said that because you do wanna focus first and foremost on your business, your process, and your people, as I mentioned. But you do also wanna look at technology to a lesser degree, it might not be as important, but you do wanna look at how technology can enable some of those business and process and people changes. 
here's where some of the glamorous new technologies like artificial intelligence and Internet of Things and other types of technologies can really help you achieve that quantum leap improvement to your business. And so on one hand, you want to start with your business, your people and your processes, but you also want to look at how technology can improve your people and processes. And in some cases, there's new technologies out there that people might not be thinking about that can help improve the business. So for example, when we start looking at machine learning or artificial intelligence, some think that there's very limited use for that technology, but actually it can help enable and automate a lot of different parts of your organization, whether it's your finance organization, your accounts payable, your predictive analytics, your forecasting, your planning. There's different parts of your business that can be improved by technology such as machine learning. So it's really important to mirror or to marry the knowledge and understanding of what you want to change on the people and process side of the equation, and then marry that with how technology can help enable those changes. The number one thing that will determine whether or not your transformation is successful is organizational change management. It's the people side of the equation. So we can talk all we want about enhanced business processes, but none of that will matter if we don't have organizational change management to support and enable the changes. Now, I have yet to meet a CIO or an executive of any sort for that matter that has said that they invested too much in organizational change management or even enough in organizational change management. And this goes for our own clients, by the way. A lot of times we hear the feedback that we wish we would have done more, we wish we would have listened to your team, telling us that we should do more change management. So chances are you're not going to overinvest in change management and chances are very high that you're underinvesting in change management. And to be truly successful in your transformation initiatives, you're really gonna have to dial in that organizational change component. And to better understand change management, especially if you aren't a change practitioner, I've included a download below in the links that allow you to download a guide to successful change management initiatives. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Now as a CIO, especially if you're a strong leader, it can be easy to take a strong leadership role, take ownership, take responsibility, lead the charge and be out there floundering on your own, trying to lead the business along. And that's a dangerous spot to be in because even the best CIOs that we've worked with aren't capable of, nor should they be leading the business without heavy business involvement. So what ends up happening a lot of times is when it becomes too much of an IT initiative or an IT department driven initiative led by the CIO without enough business involvement, a couple things happen. One is you have misalignment between the IT department and what the business needs are. Secondly, when, not if, but when things get difficult or things get tough during the transformation, the CIO ends up having a bullseye on them and the blame ends up being placed on them as sort of a scapegoat. So if not for the benefit of your own entire organization, but also for the benefit of your own self-preservation and your own career prospects, it's really important to ensure that you've got heavy business involvement, you're partnering with the business, you're engaging key stakeholders and business process owners to define what the needs are and really view your job as a CIO or IT director to translate those needs and that vision into how technology can better enable that. But at the end of the day, the business really needs to own what those requirements and what those needs and priorities and objectives are. It's really IT's role and the CIO's role to figure out how technology and the overall transformation can support those changes. And finally, one of the biggest things that you can do as a CIO or IT director is ensure that you are taking control of the transformation. And in particular, make sure that you're not outsourcing the initiative to a system integrator or to a third party consulting firm. Now, a lot of times when you're working with one of the big system integrators, for example, they will be more than happy to take on the entire transformation for you and staff the project full of people that will someday go away once the project is over. But in order for this project to be successful, you really need ownership not just within the business, but within the entire organization. So do whatever you can to build the competencies in-house on the business side of the equation, as well as internally within your own IT department to really be more of an equal partner with your system integrator rather than deferring too much to that system integrator. So some of the most successful CIOs that we work with and the most successful transformation initiatives we work on are ones where the CIO and other business stakeholders and executive stakeholders take ownership and control of the project and use system integrators as more of a support mechanism rather than someone that they can defer uh, everything to as sort of a silver bullet.
So in addition to some of the information I've provided in this video, I also encourage you to download our 2020 Digital Transformation and ERP Report, which is in a link I've included below. That guide you can download from our website via the link. It gives you a lot of different best practices on how to manage these transformations successfully. I've also included some links to other resources that might help you in your journey as well, particularly if you're a new CIO or if you're doing a digital transformation for the first time. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.